Of them filming my summer TBR when it's pissing it down outside. Hello, my name is Roisin. I'm really low down here. Hello, my name's Roisin, and today I'm going to talk to you about 12 books that I want to read this summer. And by summer, I mean July, August, and September. I do these TBRs every quarter. If you want to see last quarters, I'll leave it linked in the cards above. The first book I'm going to talk to you about is The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein, which I do have a physical copy of, but I couldn't find it this morning when I was running around my house. This is the next book for my big book book club, um, which if you don't know what that is, it is a book club where we read books over 500 pages, one every two months. And as I said, in July and August, I will be reading The Shock Doctrine with Sunny from a Sunny Book Nook. Um, I will leave all of the further information in the cards above, plus there is a Discord link in the description if you want to go and check that out. The Shock Doctrine is a modern classic of leftist literature. Um, it is about disaster capitalism, which I believe was a term coined by Naomi Klein. Um, and it is about the ways in which uh, various corporations and governments who are influenced by corporations um, take advantage of moments of disaster in order to make money and further their own power um, rather than helping the poorest. Um, this book was written in 2007 so I think it deals with things like the Exxon oil spill in Alaska um, and things that happened sort of obviously before 2007, so it doesn't deal with modern examples of it, like um, even the 2007-8 financial crisis won't be in this book, um, and also things like Covid and uh, various other climate rela change related disasters that have happened in the last 15 years since it was published. But it is one that I'm excited to read. I've read Naomi Klein before, I have read This Changes Everything, and I really enjoy her style. She is a journalist, and I like the way that she is able to marry kind of personal stories, the stories of individuals who have experienced the disaster, alongside the more hard, like, uh, quantifiable facts. I think she does a really good job of that, which really helps to um, further her points. And I like that she is not trying to pretend some sort of journalistic objectivity, which is impossible. Um, she lets you know her sub subjective perspective. She lets you know from what perspective she is writing. And I think that that is really valuable in a journalistic reading experience. Next on my list is Girls Against God by Jenny Val. Um, August is Women in Translation Month. So I have a few books here by women in translation. And this is one that I have owned for nearly a year now and not read. Um, this was translated from the Norwegian by Mariam Idris. And I'm not sure I've read that much Norwegian fiction, um, but this one definitely falls into that weird women camp that kind of um, slightly horror uh, adjacent books. Horror that is not too plotty or too slashery is a lot more unsettling, I think, is the vibe that we're going for. Yeah, this follows a woman who gets involved in the black metal scene in Norway, I think in the 90s, um, in a small town, um, and then she moves to Oslo. Uh, a coven of witches cook up curses, demons descend on a cafeteria, a time-travelling Edvard Munch joins a metal band, closely pursued by his pubescent model, who has murder on her mind. Meanwhile, out deep in the forest, a group of schoolgirls lose their way and find only terrible strangeness. Awful things happen in Aspic. So yeah, there's going to be a strange, weird little one and one I am excited to read for Women in Translation Month. Alongside um, The Shock Doctrine, another leftist classic that I want to read is Profit Over People by Noam Chomsky. Um, I've never actually read any Chomsky um, and I've always been meaning to. Noam Chomsky is a linguist and a leftist academic. Um, most famous for the idea that well, like in, in terms of linguistics, he's most famous for being of the school that language learning is innate rather than something uh, caused by nurture. Um, like which language you learn is nurture, but the fact that you learn to speak is innate. Um, but in terms of his leftist politics, he has been known for a very long time for being anti-imperialist um, and socialist. I'm not sure if he's communist, but like quite left, quite a strong leftist figure. And I've heard, read interviews with him and listened to talks by him, but I've not read any of his books yet. I own the ebook of Profit Over People, which I think is his most well-known. And I'm hoping to read that this summer. Apparently it's going to be my leftist nonfiction summer. First published in 1998, so yeah, it is um, coming up for 30 years old. Why do traders at prominent banks take high risk gambles with the money entrusted to them by hundreds of thousands of clients around the world, expanding and leveraging their investments to the point that failure led to a global financial crisis that left millions of people jobless, hundreds of cities economically devastated. So it is about neoliberalism and the world order. And I think that it will intersect quite a lot with um, profit, uh, with uh, the shock doctrine. I think Naomi Klein and Noam Chomsky are definitely, 
I think they know each other. Uh, another book that I've been meaning to read for so long, it was on my 23, 23 books to read in 2023, which I'll leave linked in the cards above, um, is Perfume, The Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind. This is about uh, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille, who lives in France in the 18th century, and he um, has no sense of smell, and ha no, he has no personal smell, but has a very good sense of smell, um, and he becomes obsessed with making the perfect perfume, um, which involves murder. Um, so this one is one that I'm really excited to read. I really loved the film when I was a teenager, um, so I'm excited to see how it works as a book. Um, I think it's going to be quite like sumptuous and quite fun, kind of that, again, weird creepy books, um, but I think a, a little bit more grumpy than some of the other books on my list. So I'm excited to read this. And also 18th century France, uh, 18th century anywhere, anywhere <laughs> is one of my like time periods that I want to read more about. Um, and I think that the language of this is going to mirror that time period as well. Um, so yeah, I really want to get to it soon. Um, and I'm trying to hold myself accountable by telling you about it. I'm actually doing really well on my 23 books in 23. Uh, 2023 I only have eight left um, so I've read 15 of them in the first six months of the year which means that I'm very much ahead of schedule um, but uh, I want to keep up keep up the momentum. I've also been reading a lot more Zadie Smith this year I have a video uh, essay where I talk about On Beauty and its relationship with Howard's End if you would like to go and check that out um, but I've, I've decided I want to try and read all of Zadie Smith's work because I really really love her as a writer and the next one that I want to read is NW. I think that White Teeth was also set in northwest London so I think Zadie Smith is a northwest Londoner um, by the where she sets her novels. I am the opposite of that, I'm a southeast Londoner um, so it, it's uh, but it's still like the experience of London and the way that she writes London that I really really enjoy. Um, Northwest follows four different characters living in London after they've left their childhood council estate, grown up and moved on to different lives. From private houses to public parks, at work and at play, the city is brut brutal, beautiful and complicated. Yet after a chance encounter, they each find that the choices they've made, the people they once were and are now, can suddenly rapidly unravel. Um, which sounds great. And also I think this one is written in quite an experimental style with lots of different like types of writing, like the screenplay, um, the shifts between like first and third person. Um, and I'm excited to see how that works because I can really enjoy um, playing with form in that way if it makes sense for the narrative of the novel. Another writer that I wanted to read all of is Hilary Mantel, um, and this is Beyond Black, which I bought earlier, which I bought um, a couple of months ago, and there is a vlog of my shopping experience there. Um, but yeah, Hilary Mantel obviously passed away in September last year, and um, I've read all of the Cromwell trilogy and um, A Place of Greater Safety, which was about the French Revolution, and um, The Giant O'Brien, which was about a uh, Irish very tall man in the 18th century. Um, so this Beyond Black would be my first not historical fiction Hilary Mantel, um, so I'm excited to see how she tries it, how she how she gets on with it. This is about a medium who travels around speaking to the dead um, with her flint-hearted sidekick, Colette. Um, but behind her persona she is haunted by the ghosts, conceal the terrors of the next world from her clients. Um, and is plagued by the spirits of men from her past. Uh, I've mentioned before how Hilary Mantel often writes ghost stories. A lot of her stories are about that liminal space between life and death and the way that people from your past haunt you, whether that's literally or figuratively. Um, I love Hilary Mantel's writing. She is brilliant. Um, and so I'm interested to see what contemporary fiction feels like from her. Although I think this is from the 90s. So again, it is nearly 30 years old, so not quite contemporary anymore. Oh no, 2005, but still, that is still 18 years old, so. One that I have the audiobook for that I got from Libro FM's influencer program a while ago, um, but I haven't actually listened to yet, is Age of Vice by Deepthi Kapoor. When this first came out, it was all over um, Bookstagram, and I was really intrigued. Um, so I, I, I definitely want to get to it uh, sooner rather than later. I think it was one of the first ones that I got from um, from Libro FM, and it is kind of a. I think it's going to be like a fast-paced literary romp again, which I think when that's what we're doing um, in these summer months is literary romps with uh, a lot of action and kind of fun, as well as. Um, non-fiction <laughs> leftist, like fi non-fiction to make you angry and fiction to make, make, uh, make you feel like you're having a good time, but with um, more 
political nuance kind of undertones. Um, so this is set in New Delhi. Epic action-packed story propelled by seductive wealth, startling corruption and bloodthirsty violence of the Wadia family. Loved by some, loathed by others, feared by all. Um, in the shadow of lavish estates, extravagant parties, predatory business deals and calculated political influence, three lives become dangerously intertwined. AJ is the watchful servant born into poverty who rises through the family's ranks. Sonny is the playboy heir who dreams of outshining his father whatever the cost. And Neda is a curious journalist caught between morality and desire against the sweeping plot fueled by loss, pleasure, greed, yearning, violence and revenge. Will these characters' connections become a path to escape or trigger further destruction? Um, so yeah, just sounds like it's going to be such fun. Um, all of the reviews I read from earlier this year said it is super fast paced and kind of unput downable. Um, but it does also deal with like the class aspect of Delhi um, and I I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued to read it. Another Indian author that I want to read that I again has been on my list for so long and I'm hoping to finally get to it but it is a very chunky book um, and so uh, we will see how well I do but that is Maximum City Bombay Lost and Found by Sekatu <laughs> by Sekatu Mehta. Um, try not to throw it around and this is about Mumbai or Bombay um, and it is kind of part travel writing, part history, part investigative journalism. Um, our Secretary Mehta is from Mumbai but he doesn't live there anymore and then he's gone back um, to do to, to explore his city um, and it's about his relationship with the city and also what the city is. Um, I read the first chapter before um, which was about the Muslim Hindu riots that happened in in uh, Mumbai in the 90s um, about the, the, the difficulty uh, of the, the relationship between those two and I think there was Buddhists involved as well as far as I remember um, but again this book was published in 2004 so it is going to be a look at Mumbai in like the 90s rather than modern Mumbai, Mumbai. Mom, Mumbai or Bombay. It's going to be not so modern, it's not going to be dealing with um, Nahindra Modi and his how he has uh, what's the word I want like stirred up those uh, Hindu Muslim uh, issues in India but I'm excited to read it. I've never been to Mumbai or Bombay um, and I am ex interested to see. Um, I've heard that the writing is wonderful and very like evocative. I also want to read Hagseed by Margaret Atwood and this is the one book from my spring TBR that I am um, that I didn't read in spring and so has migrated over to my summer TBR. Uh, this is part of the Hogarth Shakespeare collection where um, very well-known writers retell Shakespeare stories for a modern audience and Hagseed is the story of the Tempest and I believe it is about a uh, theatre director um, who tried to stage uh, a performance of The Tempest but was over but that it was ended up being a disaster because of the machinations of people against him um, and now he's working in a prison to again perform The Tempest and um, by various machinations those people end up in his orbit again. Um, so The Tempest is one of my favourite Shakespeare plays. Um, I'm a little less sure if Margaret Atwood is one of my favourite writers um, but I'm, I would like to give this one a go and see if it works out for me. Um, see if if it, it makes me want to read more outward or less outward in the future. Then we have some cool girl literature um, that I want to read and the one that I bought for that is Year of Magical Thinking by um, Joan Didion. Joan Didion is a very Californian writer from the like 70s and 80s I think is when she was like slouching towards Bethlehem. Bethlehem was written and like that's kind of the era that she is known for and I think this is um, her non-fiction memoir. I love the cover of this, I don't know if you can see it from over here. Um, but yeah this is a wonderful cover and I really really want to read and I want to see if Joan Didion is a writer for me. Um, and this is about the year when her daughter went into intensive care because of an illness that she had and um, her husband had a massive heart attack and died and it is about her experience of grief and grieving um, and a very personal memoir. I know a lot, I've read a recent review that said that like some people think she's trying to be not like other girls but it's just like a personal relation of grief and the way that she experienced grief so um, I don't know but I am excited to try this to see if I found a new author that I want to explore more of the work of and I've heard there is also a companion book to this um, although I can't remember the title of it so um, maybe I will end up reading that one as well if this one works for me. This one is thankfully a nice little book compared to some of the chunky books I have on my list. 
The other one, and I can say that I have definitely been very much influenced by Nathan from Nathan's Nook, um, who I will leave his channel linked down below if you want to go and check it out. Um, and that is Aquavita by Clarice Lyspector, who seems like all the cool girls are reading uh, Clarice Lyspector at the moment, and I want in. Aquaviva by Clarice Lyspector. I should get the name right before I try and read it. And this is also a woman in translation. It's been translated by Stefan Tobler. Um, and this is a direct, confessional and unfiltered mediation on everything from life and time to perfume and sleep. It is strange and hypnotic in the emotional power and has been a huge influence on many artists and writers, including one Brazilian musician who read it 111 times. Despite its apparent spontaneity, it is a masterly work of art which rearranges language and plays with the gaps between reality and fiction. So that's the synopsis and it tells you nothing, um, but still I'm intrigued and I want to give it a go. Like I said, everyone, I've seen Clarice Lyspector a lot recently, she seems to be um, on my personal zeitgeist radar um so i want to try out her writing and then the other kind of book that i love to read in the summer there's some of them here as you've seen is kind of creepy unsettling horror for me days when it's too hot are days to read horror um they it just works for me i prefer days when it's too hot to more like the autumnal days um i prefer those for horror and one of those that i've been meaning to read is ring shout by p jelly clark and honestly the cover is like 80% of the reason I want to read this. I absolutely love this color cover. I think it's so iconic um, and brilliant. And this is set in 1915. The birth of the nation cast a spell across America, swelling the clown's ranks and drinking deep from the darkest thoughts of white folk. All across the nation they ride, spreading fear and violence among the vulnerable. They plan to bring hell to earth, but even Ku Kluxes can die. Standing in their way is Maurice Baudreau and her fellow resistance fighters, a foul-mouthed sharpshooter and Harlem hellfighter. Armed with blade, bullet and bomb, they haunt their hunters and send the clan's demons straight to hell. But something powerful is brewing in Masson and can the war on hell, and the war on hell is about to heat up. Can Maurice stop the clan before it ends the world? So it is um, based in hi the history, true history about the Ku Klux Klan, but in this they are like actual demons uh, rather than just human demons. Um, so there is kind of the mystical element of it. And I think it's fairly short as well. <laughs> so um, hopefully I will enjoy that one. So these are 12 of the books that I am hoping to read this summer. I definitely hope to read more than 12 books in the next three months, but these are 12 that I definitely want to get to soon. If you have read, read any of them, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I would, um, I'd love to hear what you have to say and let me know what you're planning to read this summer too. Are you planning to read weird, creepy horror, leftist nonfiction and rompy books? Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe. I put out new videos twice a week, so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.